Matt, and today we're going to learn how to create an account in your CRM. So first go to CRM at the top and click Accounts in the Flyout menu. Once you're on the CRM page, you're going to see a list of all of your customers and vendors that we grouped together in Accounts. And you're going to click the New button at the top left. So once you open the account modal, you'll notice the primary details about the account at the top. You have your account name. In this case, we're going to use Johnson & Johnson. You can choose the default sales order and purchase order terms. So every time you schedule an order, whether it be a sales order or a recycling order, it's going to default to these terms, but you can change it at the order level. You're also going to want to change the rep. The rep is going to default to whatever users logged into the system at the time, so I'm logged in as admin, so that's the main rep on the account. But if you want to change the owner, you can start typing and select a user that's in your system. So every time you schedule a sales order or a recycling order, it's always going to default to this rep, Connor, but you can also change that at the order level as well. If you want to generate a customer code, which is an alphanumeric code that Razor automatically generates, you can leave that selected. If you're using a, a separate accounting system that you want to tie in with Razor, be sure to use this reference field and reference that external customer code. If you look at the tabs on the left, these are all of our navigation tabs that make up the account. So we're on the primary contact tab right now, and we're going to fill out the primary contact details. Once the primary contact details are filled out, you're going to go to the address details at the bottom and fill out the invoice bill to and ship to addresses. To add a new address, click the pencil icon and start filling out your address. Once you're done filling out the address details, you'll have your location name. That's what you're going to reference when you change locations. You have the street address, the city, the state, zip code, country, and phone number. Also, if you notice at the top, the address, it's this button is disabled as the bill to, and you also have the is main disabled as well. The reason why these are disabled is because you're adding in the default bill to address. You can change this on the address tab at a later date. You can also link warehouses. So if you have multiple warehouses in the system, you can link warehouses here. Once you added in your default bill to address, you can either add in a new ship to address by clicking this pencil icon, or you can simply copy it over from the bill to. So I'm just going to click copy, and it copies it over to the ship to address. If you had any tags in the system set up, you can choose the tags that are relevant to this customer. In this case, we might tag an industry tag. So I'm going to start typing in pharma, and it looks like we have a tag in the system for industry pharma. So I'm going to choose that, and I'm going to move to shipping accounts. Once you move to shipping accounts, it's going to save this customer automatically. So now the customer is now in the system. And on this tab, you can add in default FedEx account number, UPS number, and USPS number. So if you add in this account number at the ship shipping stage, when you fulfill a sales order, you're going to be able to choose recipient billing and tie in the customer's FedEx account number. Under contacts, you can add as many contacts as needed by clicking the create button at the top and adding in a new contact. On the addresses tab, you can add in more addresses by clicking the create button add in a new address and then you can change whether it's a primary ship to bill to or an other address you can also change the is main by selecting it and it's going to overwrite if you have a primary ship to or primary bill to it's going to overwrite that address as the primary address you can also link contacts and you can also link warehouses the activity tab is a bird's eye view of all the activity in the system. So once you start generating some activity with this customer, whether it's creating recycling orders, sales orders, purchase orders, invoices, all this activity is going to be collected. As you can see here, sales orders, invoices, purchase orders, RMAs, all this activity is going to be collected in this tab here. So it's a nice way of seeing all the activity in the system by the customer. On the quotes tab, you can see all outstanding quotes or pending quotes for this customer. You can also create a quote simply by clicking the create button and start generating a recycling quote. DSV stands for downstream vendors. So if you're adding a vendor into the system, you can store their paperwork like their certifications by clicking create, choosing a certification from the dropdown. 
choosing an expiration date, and then uploading a file. Once that's uploaded, it's going to save that certification and store it with this customer or vendor in this case, and your team will be able to reference it going back to the DSV tab. Notifications are for internal notifications only, so you can set up notification sets in the system settings and then choose a notification set that applies, click it, and this customer will now be tied to the notification set. It's important to note that this is only internal notifications, so only your team will receive notifications for activity on this customer. At this point, there's no external notifications in Razor. The File Upload tab allows you to store any details about the customer, whether it be a PDF, Excel document, Word document, uh, contract, you can store all that information here. Communications allows you to communicate on the account by typing in your comment and clicking the comment field and then it's going to generate a new comment with the date and also as an administrator you can edit comments or you can remove comments completely. This is a security role though so if you have a sales guy that's adding in comments he's not going to be able to add and delete comments. The contracts tab is if you set up any contracts in the system associated to this customer so you would have to do that under the Recycling Contract Management tab. And once you create a contract, assign it to a customer, it's going to appear here. And Razor has a way of managing multiple contracts and discrepancies uh, based on the contract. So you would see a list of all the contracts here. And lastly, Client Portal. So if you want this customer to have access to a Client Portal, you would have to enable it first. Add in a login, and if you, you're using a login that's already been used, you're going to get notified saying this login is not available. So give them a new username and enter in a password. And once that's set, you can send a welcome email to jsmith at jnj.com with the portal URL, their login, and password. Also, you can choose which reports that you want visible to this client. So after you settle an order, these reports, settlement report, settlement summary, picture report, certificate of recycling, this customer is able to pull all these reports from the client portal. So by selecting it, you're setting it at the user level. You can also change these at the order level if you only want certain reports visible to the customer. Lastly, you have financial visibility. So by checking these box, you're going to allow the financial visibility to be seen in the client portal. Not all customers, not all Razor customers use the making payments and receiving payments in Razor, so that does affect the financial information. So the customer might get confused if you have financial information in the client portal. So usually you're going to leave these unchecked. Once you're finished with this customer, click save and exit, and the new customer has been created. So if I go to the top and type in Johnson & Johnson, click enter, my new account's going to appear. Thanks for watching this video. You just learned how to create a new account in Razor. For more helpful videos, check out our YouTube channel, or you can email us at support at razorerp.com.